My name is Sam Glazer and I'm currently a junior at Harrison High School. My father served in the English Royal Marines for four years and some other members of my family participated in ROTC and were also in the Army. And I'm currently in the college application process and possibly applying to a military college such as West Point or an ROTC program. And I would possibly like to become an officer and serve in the Special Forces after college if I go down that pathway and see what I feel after that. And today I have some questions today that I'm going to ask and hear about your past stories or experiences and learn about the reality of being in the military. And I would like others and myself to learn about the reality of serving and the lessons one can gain from hearing these stories. And the first thing I would like to ask is, has your family had a history of military at all before you? Yes, somewhat. Uh, both, I, both my uncles were soldiers in World War II. My brother was in the Navy, my brother-in-law in the Navy. And uh, uh, beyond that, the family history is a little unclear. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so it's, it's been a family thing, tradition. Mm -hmm. And were you drafted or were you enlisted into the... I was military? drafted in the fall of 1968. 1968. And did you pick the branch you went to? That was not a choice given to you as a draftee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did you always want to serve or you just because you were drafted you went into it? I had ambivalent feelings because of the nature, the, the political nature of the war, the lack of purpose, the lack of definition a lack of goals, and uh, I was very much aware of it and the controversy surrounding it. And uh, therefore, it was a question of, well, you know, it is your duty. And uh, again, a lot of ambivalence about it, but eventually I said to myself, okay, I will, I will go in. Mm -hmm. And do you recall your first days or experiences in the service? Oh, yes, I do, I do. I was uh, drafted out of White Plains and down to Whitehall Street in Lower Manhattan. Mm -hmm. uh, a day later, I was we were driven over on a bus to uh, Newark Airport, and I had my first airline ride to Jacksonville, Mississippi, where we uh, were inducted in, and then did uh, two months at uh, Fort Gordon in Georgia. And without leave, two months at Fort Polk, Louisiana, also known as Tigerland, uh, for advanced training in uh, light weapons infantry. I remember a lot, yes. <laughs> I remember a lot. Yeah. And you served in the Vietnam War, correct? Yes. From there, uh, I graduated from Fort Polk, Louisiana infantry wow. training, and we were sent to uh, Fort. Lewis in Washington, group travel to Vietnam, mm. landed in Cameron Bay, deployed down to Benoit, and then was assigned to the 9th Infantry Division, 5th Battalion, 60th Infantry, and I was there for a year. Mm. And in that battalion, what was like your specific role or assignment there? I served in a lot of ways, as, as is probably normal. Uh, basically, I was a rifleman, so I was going out with uh, on a squad, platoon, and company operations. As a rifleman, I was an RTO, radio telephone operator. Uh, I also spent time in the weapons squad, where uh, because I had a few, a course or two in college math, I became a fire direction control for the 81 millimeter mortars. Basically, you can keep it the slope of the gun and the azimuths and all the other things mm -hmm. to hit the target properly. Yeah. Um, so I had to, it was a wide experience over the 12 months. Mm -hmm. For sure. And what were some of your most like memorial or impactful experiences from when you were there for yourself? Um, I guess you have to boil it down to combat. Yeah. That, uh, you know, there's strange experiences, humorous experiences, and, and whatnot, but, you know, being in a firefight is a, not something that uh, we're generally accustomed to in civilian life. Yeah. At least not in my, where I grew up in yeah. Westchester County, so mm -hmm. 
uh, being in a firefight, seeing how people react, seeing how you react, uh, and knowing what to do and how to do it, not panicking, and uh, basically forgetting about fear and doing the job that you've been assigned. Mm -hmm. And during this time, were you able to stay in touch with any friends or family during this? Oh, sure. We, sure. we wrote letters home, and uh, we received letters. Uh, the the military had a sophisticated system for getting the mail back and forth, so uh -huh. that was not an issue. Mm -hmm. And one time on R and R, halfway through, I got to call home when I was in Bangkok uh -huh. uh, on R and R. Mm -hmm. That was that was about it. Good. And during your time there, how did people like entertain themselves or kind of bring themselves out of the war, like during times when you weren't in combat? Well, quite different from what I understand goes on today. Mm -hmm. Remember, I was there for all of 1969. Mm -hmm. We were in a uh, battalion uh, fire base halfway, well, about 15, 20 miles south of Saigon. And we operated all the way out to the Cambodian border and all the way over to the uh, East Coast. Uh, but uh, we were near Saigon. There was plenty of resupply. There was plenty of light beer there was uh and we happened to be in a town called rocket king r-a-c-h-k-i-e-n where that was a uh, also a, a place where the national police uh, had a post and the national police were able to provide uh, soldiers with a lot of entertainment uh, we were surrounded by hooches this that the other thing that would offer varieties of entertainment that you might find that a young 20, 19, 18 year old young man would be interested in <laughs> for pay. And, uh, and then also there was a great deal of uh, drugs available, mm. especially marijuana, pot, this, that, the other thing. But uh, mm. other people did uh, you know, other more stronger products available. Um, do you have any like current friends or people that served with you that you're still in contact with today? Yes, I have three people from my company. There is a 5th Battalion, 60th Infantry Organization, mm -hmm. and I've been to a few reunions. I was out to see my son in L.A. recently and drove up to see my friend Ernie, who's uh, in Fresno. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was, uh, I like to keep in touch with them and they keep in touch with me. Mm -hmm. So when you got out of the military, what did you do after that? Well, uh, after my 12 months in Vietnam was up, I uh, came back to the United States. So they sent me, assigned me to Fort Benning, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, was, uh, I was not uh, happy with that. It was hot. It was, and I'm doing some of the same stuff I did when I was, when I was an E1. Uh -huh. And so I applied for school to go back to school. I did. I got a three-month drop. Mm -hmm. Went to Westchester Community College and just kept going. I went from there to Iona, New Rochelle. I went back a few years after that to Iona for an MBA. And I've been to some other schools, too, for various undergraduate and graduate programs. Mm -hmm. So would you say that the military had a big impact on your life and who you are today as a person? Definitely for better or worse. Better. Some people might say worse. Mm -hmm. For sure. And if there are some lessons or any like morals that you can take away from your experiences, what would those be for everyone, for the community? More for the nation than for me as an individual. I was pretty much set in my ways even before Vietnam. And uh, so, for example, um, I think I was a year or two older than the average person, and mm -hmm. you know I did uh, make a conscious effort to stay away from drugs. I had my light beer every day or whatever was available, but uh, and you know the, the uh, trying to I just learned a lot about myself in terms of w the capacity I had for doing things that I would have thought two years before that I would never do in my life uh -huh. and, uh, and do it the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, now the lessons that I learned, I think that one of the major influences when I saw the disarray in the military and the lack of leadership 
political leadership, military leadership, organization, having goals. I just became so totally fascinated by leadership and what does it take? What does it take like General Pickett led a almost suicide charge across the fields of Gettysburg mm -hmm. to dislodge Union forces mm -hmm. and they just got their butts blown <laughs> away. They had massed artillery and infantry behind walls and these, these Confederates just followed General Pickett and right up to where they were slaughtered. Mm -hmm. And it also happened at the Battle of Fredericksburg where uh, the, the, the Confederate forces were massed on the heights above Fredericksburg mm -hmm. and Union forces sent regiment after regiment after regiment in losing 7,000 people. How do you get people to do that? What's the leadership? What's the point? Yeah. Especially Fredericksburg, that battle was lost the day that the, uh, that the logistics broke down and mm -hmm. the Union forces who had 100,000 men to the Confederates 10,000 yeah. could have just crossed the river in boats. Mm -hmm. The boats were coming from Washington, which was only a short distance away. They never got there. And subsequently, you know, 10, 20,000 Union forces uh, were killed or wounded. And the, uh, and the opportunity to take Richmond was lost mm -hmm. for another four years. So that's, that's that. And I'm, that in, involved me in studying sociology and then management. So that's what I've concentrated on, management of everything. Mm -hmm. I have a degree in management and I have a uh, undergraduate degree in environmental management. I have a, uh, a degree, undergraduate degree in facilities management, and I have a postgraduate degree in management of information systems. So I just, I, it, it makes me literally cringe to see a mismanaged organization, a disorganized organization, an organization without goals that wings it. Mm -hmm. Like our current administration, it, it's just not organized. It's uh -huh. it has no purpose unless it's enriching somebody's pockets. Uh -huh. So I'm sorry to politicize <laughs> this conversation, but that's how I see it. It still irks me uh, when I see disorganization. Mm. So like, if you can give advice to me or anyone else, it'd be make sure that like things that you plan and goals that you have are very structured and organized and that you're just not going in blind to any sort of situation. Oh, right, uh, I, I think that's very important. I think that was, uh, you know, that, that's been what I've been doing my whole life. People, when they knew me before Vietnam, and then after Vietnam, just like, who is this guy? That's not the guy that went over there. Uh -huh. And everything was structured, to it, including family, buying a house, seeing to my children's educations, uh, uh, always being secure in terms of insurance and jobs and this, that, and the other thing. So uh, that uncertainty of, you know, before Vietnam and Vietnam and saying, I never want my children to be in the hands of people like that who manage that mess. Mm -hmm. So as, as far as you're concerned, I would say, um, you know, you have to make sure that the, you know, you're your personal goals align with what the military might want for you. Uh, you have to make sure that you, know, you really understand management as well as leadership. They go hand in hand. Uh -huh. And especially if you want to go to OCS or you want to be an officer and mm -hmm. you know, climb in the military, um, uh, that's, that's super critical. You see people who are yes men in the military. I saw plenty of them. Uh, and you see people who are just climbers. They want to get ranked. They want to, and they will do anything. They'll take credit for something somebody else does. They will place blame on everybody else. And they don't have the goal, the country's goals. They don't have the military's goals. And they certainly don't have their soldiers' goals in mind. And it can become ready apparent. So. Uh -huh. You know, if you're into this and you want to be a good leader and a good soldier and serve the country, what you really need to do is be able to understand both from the organizational top and the needs of the people below you because 
you're going to be in a great position of responsibility as either a, a platoon leader or a company leader or, or higher. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I wish you the best of luck. <laughs>